I see you're watching this video on YouTube. I highly recommend checking out the description below to find my channel on Odyssey and Library. The platform is ad-free after making an account and it has no evil overlords. Thank you. Howdy folks. Today I'm doing a quick first impressions of PostMarket OS on the PinePhone Convergence. Uh, I've had it on here for a few weeks. I've only really messed with it a few times. But so far when I have, I've been really impressed. Uh, the experience is really smooth, the apps work, uh, one caveat, I did not put my SIM card in here, so I did not test calls, I did not test SMS or MMS, I tested it strictly as a computer. Let me show you what's going on here. Uh, it's encrypted, so first it asks for a little uh, encryption password, so I'll go ahead and type that in, and then I showed Cal on this. This is when I realized that these guys had something really smooth going on here. So you can see I typed in the password. If I hit OK here, it's animated. I mean, like I don't even think I've seen that on the desktop before. And they have it here on a, you know, the load screen of a phone OS. A phone OS. Linux computer, mobile, whatever people want to call it. So once it gets loaded up here, it's got a really nice layout. It might just be Fosh. It might be like that on anything. Uh, it did require me to have over five numbers for a pin. So I usually just use four. So I, I have a six digit pin, which is a little long for me, but <laughs> I'll get over it. Uh, here are all the apps that are installed on it. And you can see in the top left that it is connected to Wi Fi. Uh, one thing that I really, really, really like about this, it could also be Fosh. It's possible that it's just a postmarket OS, though. But Unlike Android, where everything's like slidey and animated and fancy, this is simple, and I really, really like that. So, like, on the top bar, you don't, you know, push and pull down. You see, nothing happened. You actually, I might as well stand up here. You tap, and then you get the menu. And if, you know, you want to power it off, you tap the power menu, and then you tap that. So it's, it's a lot more like mouse clicking. Uh, so Firefox works. I'm sure people have demonstrated that you know, endlessly now, so I won't, I won't show you that. But Geary works, which is really cool. And whenever I showed Cal on this in New Mexico, uh, Geary did have a bug where... Oh, one's key ring. This is one thing that I don't like about non-Ubuntu uh, distributions is the whole key ring thing. I'm lazy and I like Ubuntu to manage that for me. So, uh, let's go to this mailbox. Whenever I showed Cal on this, um, whenever I would tap on an email, it would not show the body, but that is fixed now. So, Cal, if you're watching this, the email bodies are fixed. You don't have to press reply to see that anymore. All I did is run uh, package updates through the terminal. Um, so, you know, Geary, I actually use on the desktop, and it's a desktop application, but they have it skinned really, really well here. I mean, like, super impressively well. Uh, Evolution is also in the uh, App Store. Uh, da, 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 da. There it is. Can't see from the side. So you can see how fast that popped up. I mean, this, this is good. This is amazing. I'm super impressed. The only thing I'm not too impressed with, and this is just because I'm not familiar with Alpine Linux, is, and I'm also not too familiar with this distribution, but there doesn't seem to be much in the store, probably yet. I think people are probably still working on that. So my hypothesis is that this is filtered only for things that people have started working on for the Pine Phone, and that if you actually use Alpine Linux, it probably has more choices through here. So like if you click on some of these like games, there's nothing that shows up. And you see there were a few things loading. I don't know if that was just a loading animation or if they got filtered out because this is a Pine Phone. And I actually looked online too. And it says that like Tuxcart and things have been ported for PostMarket OS. So I'm not sure why I'm not seeing that there. I could need to add additional repositories. I haven't done anything like that. 
This is pretty much stock PostMarket OS. Um, one thing that I did find here was the maps. So I've got GNOME maps or Genome maps or GNOME maps, whatever people want to call it. Some applications do take a little bit to load, and there isn't really a load screen. It just shows the previous app you had open, or if you didn't have an app open at all, it kind of shows you the PostMarket OS triangle. Oh, okay, it looks like it's actually loaded. I just couldn't see it from the side. So let's search for Saint, oops, Saint Louis Arch. Okay, the Gateway Arch. Yes, this is a little small to look at. But let me also take this out of night mode because I feel like it's really hard to see during the day. <laughs> okay, so there's the gateway arch. So I didn't actually try to use navigation with this yet. Uh, now that I see the GPS is actually kind of working, that might be uh, neat to try. But basically this video is to show you guys that, hey, I tried PostMarket OS. Um, I really want to use something Debian based, so either Phobian or Ubuntu Touch, depending on which one is closer to a daily driver. Uh, that's mostly because of my Ansible collection. So I have nothing against PostMarket OS. I'm actually super impressed by it and impressed enough to actually put my SIM card in it if I wasn't on vacation whenever I was using it. Uh, now that I'm back, though, I'm probably going to. Uh, try Ubuntu Touch, and if it doesn't seem stable enough, I'm going to go to Phobian. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope, uh, you know, maybe this will motivate some of you guys to get on here, because this this would work well enough to be a phone, I would think. Yeah, I've got the, it's got navigation, it's got calls. Um, I mean, it's got the apps for them. I haven't tested calls, SMS, MMS, but... Uh, the actually the chatting app also works with S XMPP, so I believe you'd be able to use this app for like Facebook Messenger replacement, um, maybe Skype. I don't know what Skype uses. Um, if you use XMPP, then you probably know. That, that's what's important. But uh, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for the next one.